been kind of miserly, muggy, muggy. Cold night, but the view is still fab. Right then, onwards and upwards as they say. We are now about a week or two away from the branch meeting that the oligarchy organised to basically bang the nails in. So without further ado, let's get on with it. I want to introduce you to H. H was everything, on paper that is, that a Samaritan should be. Conscientious, knew all the rules, followed them. But as you're going to see, the next couple, she also followed some other rules. Anyway, things are starting to eat up now, this last week or two. And there's a terrible atmosphere happening now. But there's also an atmosphere of, with the director gone, sort of atmosphere of like where we are now, feeling a bit more confident. So I knew a kicking was on its way. One of the last things the director did, probably the last thing, well, he did two things actually. One of the first ones was to make a mate of mine a DD. But of course, it was DD in name only, DD of prisons. As you know, if you've been watching them, prisons were run by. T. Big T. Very close friend of, I'll rephrase that. Let's say Top T. And a very close friend of the Hidden Hand. T. And those DDs knew that uh, in Samaritans, the person who the director to put in to take over from Big T was never ever going to be allowed to do it. I knew that. Told it a few times. I said, don't let them kid you. They're never going to let you be the DD. And I must say at this point, she was the most qualified there's ever been in there to be that. He had no qualifications to be, but she had the lot. But that wouldn't stop them. She still wasn't going to be. Anyway, get a call. Chatting away. And I mentioned that one of the last things he did, well, the last thing, <coughs> was he wrote a letter to the branch, the director, basically thanking the good people he'd met. And just saying, you know, never went into great detail about nothing. Said in the letter he was going, never said why. But there was an important piece in that letter. And this piece said that a small group of people in the branch who are holding the branch back, they have their own agenda at the detriment of the callers. They are not good for the callers, in other words. And in his words, in my opinion, they should go. But also my opinion as well, though. And that letter was passed to me by the director 
and a couple of other people. I talked about the letter. And my friend said, Well, there's a letter here. That doesn't say none of that. I said, Read me the letter that's there. There was a letter being typed up. And this letter. saying that the director had gone because he had some problems there was nothing like the one the letter I had and others had and there and then I knew this is never going to get out that letter will never get out to the branch because basically it names those who should go without naming them and if you followed these videos you know what I mean She was quite shocked because she knew everything she believed in was slowly going out the window. So I made it known to her to make it known, and this is where H comes into it. To H, I had a copy of the original letter. Anyway, Vice Chair of the Committee, G, wanted to put the letter out to the branch because it was the director's last thing and he had a right to put it out. Of course, Chairperson H wanted to do what she thought was the right thing and she took the letter and said she'd pass it on. And it got passed on to the regional rep. And we all know what the regional rep's capable of. And once I knew that, I knew that the letter was never going to be seen in public by any of the volunteers. But because I'd mentioned it, when they were preparing for the branch meeting, they knew that if I turned up, they would have to do something about the letter. So the plot was getting thicker, they were getting dirtier and dirtier. So what, what you've got in effect is, they'd altered a director's letter to branch members to basically put them in a bad light. That's how scurrilous these people are. And shame on those who helped them as well. They're just as bad. Now a bit more about H. H, like I said, was the perfect Samaritan on paper. But she was devoid of one simple thing. One thing you really need to do it properly. And that's empathy. You need to be able to get a connection with the caller on the phone. And it was well known amongst elders in Samaritans. And I'm talking about not elders in age. Age as well, but people who've been there a long time. She wasn't liked. And they all thought she was absolutely rubbish on the phone. She just didn't get it, what it was about. But I had no problem with H. I knew she was one dimensional. I knew she was a professional, what we call just professional Samaritan. That means someone who's not really there because they believe it. They're there because they need something to do. <coughs> but like I said, I didn't have a problem. Others did. Anyway, H had aspirations. She wanted to go regional. And that means you've got a bigger say in the national Samaritans. And seeing as these people love meetings and love having somewhere to go, then this was perfect. But there's only one thing wrong with that. You'd have had to have been the director of a branch, your branch. That was one of the things you needed to go regional. And of course, Lots of people didn't like it. So on many occasions it was said to me, it'll never happen. She's got no support.
because most of the DDs, well not most of them, some of them, had been directed the branch before, namely Big T. And the hidden hand T. But suffice to say, that's what everyone wanted. So now we've got the letter have been changed on the sneak by the sneaks. All getting ready for this meeting. And in the next one, I'm gonna lay lay down the storyboard for how that diabolical meeting took place. Thanks for watching, and I will say at the end of this, to the right of the videos, now you can see the viewing chart of these videos. And if you look at the green parts, it's getting shown now, it's getting watched by people around the world. Thanks to the people who've commented so far. If anyone else wants to comment and isn't scared to comment, please do so. I particularly welcome comments from Samaritans, no matter where you are. Especially those from the Liverpool branch. So let's see how it goes. Ready for the next one then. There's the view, and I'll see you later.